I'd like to present to you the core. This is my custom Raspberry Pi desktop PC, a completely overkill design. So this is running the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus. This video is not sponsored by ModMyMods.com in any way. All purchases were made by me, so if you're interested in doing a project like this or one similar, uh, you should head to their webpage and have a look at what they have to offer. Now, unfortunately, this wasn't exactly what I would call a budget build. The rough total cost for this was about $353. Uh, there may have been some extra tax and shipping stuck in there in a couple places, but basically call it about $353. The only thing I didn't have to buy were laptop screws. Those are the ones that hold in the Raspberry Pi itself and the side panel onto the main case. Now I already had these left over from a previous job, so I lucked out a little bit there. All the parts were printed in Inland PLA Plus. There's a total of eight pieces. There's the main body, the side panel, the power tray, the air filter clip, and four Lexan window retainers. It took a total of around 63 hours and 13 minutes. That's two days, 15 hours, 13 minutes of actual printing time to print all of the parts. Uh, no post printing modifications were done to any of these parts with the exception of removing the support material. Uh, so I didn't cut anything. I haven't sanded, polished, painted, sealed, none of that. This is straight off the printer. Now, as we look at the back of the case, near the top, we have a panel mount HDMI port, an air filter clip, and the Raspberry Pi ports, which are flush with the outside of the case. Just below that is the radiator fan exhaust port, and at the bottom is the fuse power port plug, the exhaust port, and the exhaust fan for the power supplies in order to keep them cool. Around the front, the only thing you can see are three switches that power the Raspberry Pi, the cooling pump and radiator fans, and UV LED lights. Now the left side is where all the eye candy is. This is the fun stuff. Looking through a 1.5 millimeter thick Lexan window, we can see the full cooling loop and the Raspberry Pi. Now all wiring is tucked away underneath, out of sight, so that what you can see inside the case maintains that clean look. Now it's important to note that the entire cooling loop can be installed into the case without any disassembly, and this was done on purpose. I wanted to make the maintenance of the loop as easy as possible and eliminate any potential mess inside the case if I needed to replace a part or something happened. Now, when attaching the cooling blocks to the Raspberry Pi, I opted to use thermal glue rather than thermal tape. Now, the reason I didn't go with thermal tape is that it doesn't have the hold necessary to keep the blocks attached to the components over a long period of time. I wanted something that was a little more permanent. So gluing the USB and Ethernet cooling block was pretty easy. Just a dab in the middle and around the outer perimeter, push it on, let it sit. Nothing special here. But when it comes to the CPU, I did quite a bit extra. So I used Cooler Master Maker Gel Maker Nano on top of the CPU lid, and I swear to God I just butched that name, but whatever. Its heat transference is rated at 11 watts per meter Kelvin. Now that's far better than the thermal glue, which is rated at 1.87 watts per meter Kelvin. So what I did was around the outer perimeter of the CPU lid, I spread a small bead of thermal glue, and on the inside, I put the thermal paste just on the highest elevation part of the lid. Next up, I attached the hoses. I filled the loop with Primo Chill Sys Prep, and I burped the loop and checked for any leaks. In this mixture, I ran for 24 hours straight with the Pi powered off. So when that cycle was done, I drained the system, refilled it with straight distilled water, and ran the loop for another five minutes and drained it again. After that, I put in Primachill Ice, and that was UV green. I figured it would be a really nice color. Black and green tend to go together really nicely. But you know, the real big question here is, does it cool? Well, yes, it does. Very much so. On our 100% CPU load, my base temps without cooling at 1.4 gigahertz turbo, which was uh, stock, came out to a max of 60.1 degrees. Now that caused the system to spend about 62% of its time at throttle at 1.2 gigahertz. But when the cooling blocks were attached and the loop was active, this temperature dropped way down far more than I thought. 
we actually reached 24.1 degrees Celsius and it never throttled once. That's a 61% reduction in temperatures. That's amazing. Let me know in the comments what kind of things you'd like to see appear in the next build. Stick around for my next video in which I'll be overclocking this super overkill guy right here and seeing just how much performance I can squeeze out of it. We're gonna be making several more videos based on this particular build. Don't forget to hit that like button. Let me know if you guys are interested in the content. Subscribe to my channel to help support my work. Thanks for sticking around and I hope to see everybody again. Have a good one guys.